gotta laugh ready for her friday feature gotta laugh this in fact she's got some theme music let me see do we have her theme music randy mm -hmm. maybe don't maybe we'll go out with that instead of coming and come on in here laugh I didn't know you were going to dress up the musicians like that. They look even better, Laffy, than they did last week. I know. I got them all gussied up. I was going to sing it for you if they didn't have it. So, <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> anyway, how are I, you doing? I am well. I'm glad you're here tonight. Obviously, it, it's been a rough week in many respects. And even when you bring us the tough stuff, you, you, you put your own special spin on it. Yeah. You want to get the bad stuff out of the way first? Uh, the, the stupid stuff or the bad stuff? Well, you want the bad stuff? I got bad deep, stuff. The deep, nasty, ugly stuff. And then yeah, we can laugh deep, after that. Nasty, nasty stuff. There's a little stupid in it that you don't even know about. Um, but it's definitely nasty. There's a guy named Michael Crook who tweeted about the Fort Hood shooter. So this is a serious subject. Um, but he says uh, in his tweet, I think Nadal Hassan is an absolute hero. He's a hero. Uh -huh. Yes, isn't that nice? And then he goes on to say that the, the woman who shot him uh, turned out to be a little witch, and I'm using a different word than he used. And then he said some nasty stuff about uh, Barack Hussein Obama. And then he went on to say, as a parting shot, may I say that I hope you and all your fellow soldiers come back in pine boxes so I can spit on you. So he's an obvious do-gooder. Who is this person? He, he I I don't know. Well, he's apparently been on TV before. He was on um, Shuddering right now, Hannity and Combs at one time as a guest, and they, they ripped into him. But the thing is, <laughs> the thing is, even if he was doing this as an attention getter, because this is what I'm getting from him. You know, he goes on these shows and he's a sensationalist like this. He says outlandish things to people. But even if it is just to get attention or kicks, um, it, what happens is sickos listen to him, and they, they take him seriously, and they could even act on things that he says. Yes, yes. We're doing a lot of that next hour when we talk about what happened at Fort Hood and yeah. how the media was treating, you know, first the threat of danger before that, and then how they treated the incident itself after that. And, and the right wing, not surprisingly, has just covered itself in shame on that oh. one. Yes, that was ridiculous, but I'll let you, you know, that's a, uh, for your next hour. But this hour, let me tell you a little something, a little fun fact about, about our little Michael Crook, who's named so aptly. little fun fact is he claims to be an ordained minister. <laughs> and, <laughs> yes, so he's stupid in everything I do. Um, he, he apparently got his ordainitude at the Universal Life Church online, where it says, welcome, you were about to become an ordained minister of the Universal Life Church in Modesto, California. Please be sure to find out about the legal doctrines governing your country, state, or province. And then down the way it says, applying for ordination in the name of a fictitious person or animal or the submission of a person's name without his or her permission is fraud. So I hope wow. you use an animal's name. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm glad he went to such an esteemed institution so that he could learn about godliness and, and all that. Yes, and, and you can see by what he preaches that he's full of love. Yeah. yeah. So, are the three, so are the three percenters. You got that one ready for us, too. Oh, I've got the three percenters, but I have also have a, a stupider story. The three percenters were, were kind of a nasty one, too. Do you want stupid or do you want kind of the three percenter creepy? Surprise me. What are we doing? Let me give you stupid. Okay. <laughs> Go for that. With a twist of, 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 of not evolved. Um, during the Tuesday election, there was a guy named Ali Akbar, who's a young Republican activist. Mm -hmm. And he, he tw uh, tweeted, had a poll watcher's tires slashed at uh, Plattsburgh precinct, proof coming for skeptics. So we're all thinking, what kind of idiot trumpets the fact that he had somebody's tires slashed? Well, he got all upset because the tweeters were all saying, you, you know, what kind of idiot are you? And he says, no, 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 no. It was a Republican uh, precinct worker for Hoffman, you jerks. It was the Democrats who slashed the tires. Well, while he's tweeting this, he also reports that he's blackberrying all his tweets while driving 100 miles an hour. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> yes, this is a real smart guy. Um, so I called him the two-seater speeder tweeter. <laughs> <laughs> Then, then Hoffman jumps in. Hoffman himself jumps in, and, and it sort of implies that the Democrats were behind the tire slashing and that they were also uh, behind bringing in troops and ACORN to steal the election. Now, after all of this, all the accusations back and forth, Hoffman and, and stupid guy, 
after all that, it turns out that the tire person actually damaged their own tire by driving over a broken bottle. Aha. Uh-huh. So boy, that really kind of takes the water out of the whole thing, doesn't it? You just hear it quietly <laughs> drain away. Or the cola. And so I was <laughs> wishing that maybe Acorn had secretly videotaped the whole thing, but no, they're not, you know, they're not like Republicans that way. You laugh at these acorn bottles. You just wait until one jumps in front of your car, young lady. <laughs> okay, you want a little bit about the three percenters while we have a couple of minutes? Yeah, let's dive in there. All right, the three percenters, <laughs> they're their own little group. Uh, you know, you hear the tea chantrimers and the, and the birthers and the tenthers and the deathers, and now we've got the three percenters. And these are kind of zealot types uh, that, that are patterning themselves after the American Revolution. And they claim that they are gun owners who will not disarm. They will not obey any, any further laws about gun ownership. They are willing to fight and die. And if forced by any would-be oppressor, they would kill the de- in defense of ourselves and the Constitution. Uh, They also say that uh, we are the people that the collectivists who now control the government should leave alone if they wish to continue unfettered oxygen consumption. We are the 3% attempt to further oppress us at your peril. And I was like hiding under the desk while I was reading this, which made it really hard to do. But I figured if, you know, they're worried about the size of their guns and they got bigger problems than this. (sighs) I'm glad you gave us the the sugar first because that is really hard to swallow. Really hard. (laughs) go there. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, why do we always do this with each other? <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. that One of us must be tacky. I'm just not going to point out which one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's me. I fully and happily admit to, to my tackitude. Um, but the thing is here, you know, after what, what Bush did to us with, with, you know, trampling on the Constitution, I'm really surprised that these people have the nerve the utter nerve to to say that you know their their rights are being trans, trampled all over because their guns aren't big enough and strong enough and you can't wear them every single place you want to wear them and it's crazy time. That's true, and there also is an undertone of what we were just laughing about, not going to say on the air. Mm-hmm. We've got um, probably another minute here. Let me let me ask you to dive into some of the pictures of the of the foxers and the teabaggers that you found, and I want to direct everybody to uh, political carnival which is linked on our site at lftlc.com. She's a Laffy Wacky partner in that, our Demented Buttercup. Uh, So Laffy, tell us about these photos that you've got up on the site. Well, I'm trying to find them because I didn't know you were going to ask me about the photos, but they were saying... Wahaha, threw you a curve. You did, you did. I mean, I can talk about them. They were... They were anti-Semitic. They talked about the Holocaust. They, they, all kinds of things were, were said that should not have been said out loud and in front of Congress people who were representing these, these crazy Tea Partiers. Um, that in itself oh, and they saw no such signs, by the way. The people who stood in front of the crowd with these ugly, horrific signs, oh, they didn't see anything. I thought, how in the world did you get elected when you can't see three feet in front of your face? <laughs> well, that's how they got elected. <laughs> the people who elected <laughs> Bingo. Oh but, uh, a couple of the signs I've got, I've got a list of what they said. Uh, Obama and his Marxist buddies are after your freedom. Health care in general is just like Nazi Germany. I'm king of the world character of Obama up there. We know what happened to the Titanic. Kiss Mao ass. Uh, Kenya trust Obama. And Obama takes his orders from the Rothschilds. There you go. Happy Hanukkah. Ladies and gentlemen, the fine character of our nation on great public display. Let's go crawl back in our holes. Laffy, it's always a joy. We'll see you next Friday. Okay, thanks a million. <laughs> okay. Our demented sidekick, Buttercup, comes to us from Political Carnival, linked at our website at lftlc.com. You'd never know she was a comedian, would you? We keep that secret around here.